Dead Stranding is one of the highly anticipated PlayStation 4 titles, but could it be a PlayStation 5 game? A gaming analyst thinks that might be the case. Battlefield 1 has got some more free DLC, so you can take advantage of that ahead of Battlefield 5's release and jump back into BF1. PlayStation Now isn't everyone's favorite service, but it is growing on me slowly, and it has gotten some new games for the month of August, so I'll be covering that. And I want to take a look at one of our personal highly anticipated titles that was released today. The reviews are in, and it seems to be a little bit of a mixed bag, but a game that definitely will cater towards some people. More on that at the end of this video. First, let's talk about Death Stranding and it possibly being a PlayStation 5 game. Now, I've been bringing up the possibility of a lot of announced titles being PlayStation 5 and next Xbox titles. When you look at games like Cyberpunk 2077, when you look at games like the upcoming Bethesda IPs in Starfield, and of course the Elder Scrolls 6, and when you take a look at games like Death Stranding, these are very ambitious games that I don't foresee being released in 2019. No, there are more likely 2020 games, maybe even later than that, and it begs the question, are these even PlayStation 4 games? The PlayStation 4 is still alive and kicking. Hell, earlier we just talked about the great quarterly report Sony had about PlayStation sales. So the PlayStation 4 is still moving along very nicely, but it is towards the latter half of its life. I think 2019 is going to be the last major year for the PlayStation 4, and late 2020 we'll see the release of the PlayStation 5, and that begs the question, with games releasing in 2020 and beyond, are those going to be PS5 games? Well, that's what analyst Michael Pachter is thinking in regards to Death Stranding. Death Stranding is the latest game from Hideo Kojima and is a PlayStation 4 exclusive, and Pachter is reckoning that the game might be a cross-gen title between the PS4 and PS4. PS5. He said this, quote, my bias is that Sony will also launch PS5 in 2020, so no reason to announce any current generation exclusives other than the ones announced so far. Death Stranding will likely be a cross-generation title. Now, cross-generation games aren't something completely unheard of. We saw that a lot early this generation with games like Assassin's Creed 4, Battlefield 4. A lot of the sports titles were cross-generation, but I think for the premiere experience with a lot of these games, that is not going to be on the PlayStation 4 or even the PlayStation 4 Pro. Rather, it's going to be on the PlayStation 5 and that's gonna be really interesting because with cross-generation titles now you're working with a three-tiered system you have the ps4 you have the ps4 pro and then assuming when dead stranding and all these other potential cross-gen games are released you would also have the ps5 so you have this three-tier system on how developers are gonna have their games run you have the lowest tier on the base playstation 4 then you have the ps4 pro and then you would have the ps5 a lot of speculation on my part but honestly this does seem to make a lot of sense i really do believe that 2019 is the last major year for the the PlayStation 4, so a lot of games like Death Stranding. I presume that they will see a PS4 release, but for the better experience, you're gonna wanna play this game on the PS5. That's just an assumption, but Michael Pachter seems to agree. Moving on from that, for those of you that like free content and who doesn't, Battlefield 1 has got some more free DLC, and now they're giving out Battlefield 1 Apocalypse. Battlefield 1 Apocalypse is the fourth major expansion for Battlefield 1, and now it's available for free. Typically goes for $14.99, but EA, with all of their generosity and with all of their loving for gamers, they are now giving out DLC for free. Of course, this makes sense since with Battlefield 5, all of the upcoming maps are going to be free and it looks like EA is really trying to make good after the debacle that was Star Wars Battlefront 2. Honestly, we all know this is damage control, but hey, the fact is that since gamers spoke out about their displeasure with Battlefront 2, now EA is moving in the right direction in offering gamers a better experience. So whatever the reason may be, consumers are getting the best of it, and that's all that matters. Now you've got some Battlefield 1 DLC for free. You've got Apocalypse available now. Even if you don't own Battlefield 1, I would recommend you add this to your cart, add it to your library, and if you do pick up Battlefield 1 in the future, you'll have this DLC ready to go. By the way, BF1 is on sale as a part of the PlayStation Plus double discount sale. It's the bundle with Titanfall 2 and it's down to $19.99. That does include BF1 Revolution, which gets you all of the DLC content anyway, but hey, thought I would mention that. Moving on from that, of everything Sony's done recently, one of the more controversial things is their push of PlayStation Now. The game streaming service has been around for quite a while, but it's not the same as Microsoft's Xbox Game Pass since, of course, you're not downloading the games, and the service is a bit more expensive, typically going for $19.99 a month. However, it should be noted that PlayStation Now has over 600 games. That is a far bigger library than Game Pass, and they're actually running a promotion right now that you can try out a month for just $9.99 or a full year for $99.99 
$29.99, or you could get the three-month pass for $29.99, so a little bit of a discount there. And we've got updates to the library for the month of August. The highlight, without a doubt, has to be XCOM 2. However, this was a PlayStation Plus title in the past, so maybe that is a little bit of a bummer, but adding XCOM 2 to the PlayStation Now library, that is fantastic. Some other games added include Warhammer 40k Death Watch. This is the Police Primal, a PS2 title, Lost Sea, Cartoon Network, Battle Crashes, and Another World 20th Anniversary. I do think there's potential in PlayStation Now. There have been rumblings about the service allowing you to download games. I think that would completely revitalize PlayStation Now, but for now, it's game streaming only, and you do really need a top-tier internet connection for the service to work properly. I would recommend you to be running on wired connection because if you're not, there's gonna be a lot of bad latency and you won't be playing the games how they're meant to be played. However, if you do have a solid internet connection, I've tried out the service and it does work pretty well when I'm on a wired connection. Still, there are times when my internet craps out and I just love to have the physical game or the game downloaded on my console and have it ready to be played at all times. So game streaming at this point, still not all there, but good to see that Sony hasn't given up on it and they are continuing to update PlayStation Now as a service. August brings some new games to it as well. And lastly, I do want to give a shout out to Chasm, which we've been talking a lot about, and that game was released today. It's a Metroidvania style game with an awesome pixel art style. That's probably the thing everyone is talking about, the incredible art style. The game is getting some pretty good reviews. Currently, it's sitting at a 75 on Metacritic. GameSpot gave the game an 8 out of 10, saying even when its flaws are obvious, Chasm is a well-crafted adventure, and during the more than 12 hours I spent playing through my first time, I got lost only once. Game Informer gave the title a 7.5, saying that Chasm is full of great platforming moments and environments, but these elements are randomly assembled into an uneven experience. BitKid succeeded in creating a Metroid-style experience that unfolds in a new way every time you play it, but I would have rather had one playthrough that was consistently entertaining. So it seems like there are some negative elements with Chasm, but overall a positive reception. Again, that game is available today on PlayStation 4, and I should mention it is also available on the PlayStation Vita. Yes, I know not many of you have that platform, but this seems like a fantastic game to have on the go. That is going to conclude this video. Dead Stranding might be a PlayStation 5 game. Looks to be a cross-gen title if Michael Pachter's analysis is to be believed. Battlefield 1 has got some free DLC in Battlefield 1 Apocalypse. You can download that right now. PlayStation Now is getting an update in August and coming with it is XCOM 2, Cartoon Network Battle Crashers, Warhammer 40k Death Watch, This is the Police, and more titles coming to that service. And you can check out the service at a discount until September 25th. And also Chasm was released today. It looks like there are some shortcomings with the title, but overall a very positive reception towards that game. It's got that great art style and looks to be a pretty good Metroidvania style game that changes every playthrough. That's gonna conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye.